Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I'm continuing my Adams Family October project where I do an Adams Family video every single week of October by making an iconic piece of Adams Family memorabilia. If you ever watched the Adams Family in your childhood, you will probably remember Cousin Farouk. Although you probably didn't know him as Cousin Farouk, you probably knew him as the guy whose foot is sticking out of a swordfish. While I was researching this project, one thing I found that was kind of interesting, there's actually several swordfish around the Adams Family estate, all with a different cousin's foot sticking out of its mouth. I guess the Adams Family doesn't have very good luck with deep sea fishing. But today we're going to be focusing on Cousin Farouk, who is wearing a boating shoe in a boating outfit. So here is Cousin Farouk that I made with his final resting place, which would be the mouth of the swordfish. I made him from polymer clay, fabric, and wood. So I'm going to be showing you in this video how I put him together. I hope you're enjoying Adam's Family October so far. I really am, and I'm looking forward to making several more videos this month. I wanted to start this project by making the leg, so I got a reference leg out of a doll kit that I plan to make lurch out of in the future. I pulled out some clay that I don't use very often, it's just a color that I just don't usually pick out to make, and decided to make the leg from that, and then I will be painting it in the future. I rolled out a size that was about the width of the leg that I needed, and then slowly formed it into a foot shape. Then I took my X-Acto and just cut off any parts of it that I felt were a little excessive. After that was done, I took a little bit more of that clay and I rolled out a very thin sheet. And this is what I'm going to use to make the shoe. I'm going to take the very thin sheet and wrap it around the foot to make the edge of the shoe. It's going to overlap over the front of the foot and later on I'm going to use a sculpting tool to smooth it out. After I have that around the foot and flattened out, I'm going to push it against the side of the foot and then use my X-Acto knife to cut around the base. Once all the excess clay is removed, I can just use my fingers to lightly form it back into a foot shape. Now I'm going to use that same flat piece of clay to create the sole of the shoe. And I'm just going to do this by putting the foot on top of the clay and then again cutting around the shape of the shoe. Now I should have a general shoe shape. And like I said before, I'm going to take my sculpting tool and just slightly smooth out the top where the pieces overlap. Then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and make a single cut down the center of the shoe. Now I'm taking a toothpick and I'm going to create some little eyelets where my shoelaces will go in and out of the shoe. This is the really fun part where you get to add all the details. I'm using my X-Acto knife to put some of the seams in. I'm not being extremely detailed, I'm just marking a line out where there might be a change of fabric in the shoe. Now I'm going to take some clay and make a very, very thinly rolled snake of clay. I'm going to use this to cross back and forth between the eyelets I made with the toothpick to create the illusion of shoestrings. This bit is a little bit fiddly, but eventually I got it to work for me. I'm also going to take that same very thin snake of clay. I'm going to form two loops. And again, this is very fiddly, so um, if you try this, just take your time with it. And then I'm going to attach those loops where the shoe would be tied at the top of the shoe. And then cut off any excess clay that I don't need. And now I have a little shoe. Because of the specific design of this Adams piece, where the shoe is sticking straight out of the fish's mouth, I wanted to make sure that I did enough to the bottom of the shoe to give it texture and give it a realistic look. So I added some treads with my X-Acto knife and used a toothpick to make a heel indention. 
Now I'm putting that in the oven to bake according to the package instructions and now I want to take a small dowel rod and this is what I'm going to use to make the swordfish's nose. I know that if I make it out of clay it is definitely not going to be strong enough so I decided to use a, an exacto knife to carve down a dowel rod and then I'm also using some sandpaper to get it thinner and thinner. It's a little bit flat like a sword um, but it does go to a fine point. After the leg has cooled down from being in the oven, I can go ahead and paint it with acrylic paints. This is actually gray even though my, my screen is making it look tan, but I painted the sock gray and now I'm using a little bit of white on the sole of the shoe and I tried to be as careful as possible but I knew once I went in with the black I could kind of fix some of my mess ups so I'm being extremely careful with the black as I go around the shoe and cover the entire thing with black acrylic paint. Once that coat is finished I can take some white and put in the shoelaces. And I've done this shoe in black and white because the original picture is in black and white. I didn't want to take any uh, artistic liberties with the colors of the shoe, but I do in the end like how it turned out. And I added some gray to the little patches at the front and the back of the shoe. And I'm also going to dry brush some gray onto the sole of the shoe to make it look like it is worn. Now I have my completed leg, I need to add the pant leg. And for this I'm using some stripey fabric so that the stripes look vertical. And um, I'm just going to hem the bottom of the fabric because this is going to be the bottom of the pant leg. I'm using tacky glue for this, but if you want to try this out, um, sewing can work as well. And I'm also going to hem one side of the fabric and this is going to be the hem that wraps around and glues onto the other side which is why I'm only needing to hem one side. Once that's all glued down I'm going to test it on my leg and see how wide my pant leg needs to be and then I have it kind of marked out with my fingernail and I'm going to cut off the excess fabric. Now I can go ahead and add glue to the right side of my fabric because I know my hem edge is going to wrap around and glue on top of that fabric. And I can create my one pant leg for Cousin Farouk. Now I'm going to take my leg and add tacky glue about half the way and the rest of the way up. And this is because I want to be able to gather my pant leg where the fish's mouth is going to be so that there are sufficient wrinkles and creases in the pants. And I'm going to hold that until that dries and then cut off any excess fabric. Once that's finished, I can go ahead and start placing where I want my swordfish's nose to be. I'm going to take some blue clay, which will end up being the blue that's the top of the swordfish, and I'm going to place it around the, um, around the wood piece I created the nose out of, and kind of smoothing the clay into the wood piece. And then I'm taking another bit of clay and wrapping it around the leg. And then I'm going to attach those two pieces together to create a kind of mouth that is wrapping around the leg. And then I'm going to take a little bit of extra clay and reinforce where the leg is coming out of the back of the mouth. Now I'm going to bake this piece because I want it to be nice and sturdy while I construct the fish's head. While that's baking, I'm going to do a process that I saw on a channel called Clay Claim. And this is a way that you can make a gradient with clay. So what I did is I put the two pieces together and then I started folding them unevenly so that the fold line doesn't match up. And then I would put it through my clay roller several times over and over again until a gradient starts to show up on my clay. This is going to be the side of my fish's body because I want a natural gradient for the look of the fish. And in the end, I got something like this. I probably put it through the clay roller between 10 to 12 times. Now that my foot and nose combination has baked, I'm gonna start constructing the fish's head. 
In the photo, I could see that there was kind of a bump that went on top, so I took some of my blue clay and just started creating the bump and then smoothing it into my already constructed fish head. After that was done, I also made sure to smooth it into the mouth and the nose that's going out holding the wood stick. I also added a bit more blue. This is going to get covered up so I didn't really care about what this blue looked like, but I added it to make the fish body a little bit longer. And I'm adding some white to the bottom. This is what gives him his little puffy jowls that look like there's actually something in his mouth. Now that that's done, I'm going to cover the fish's body. I wasn't being super careful, I just added blue at the top, white at the bottom, but I wasn't being super careful on how it looked because I knew I was going to be adding this clay over the top. So I laid it down with the blue towards the top of the fish's mouth and the white towards the bottom. And I want to keep the blue at the top attached to create the top fin, but I'm going to end up cutting off the white at the bottom once the two pieces meet. So I'm going to do that on both sides of the fish and then start smoothing it out into the fish's head. And like I said, that top piece I'm going to create into the fish's top fin. So I didn't really worry about cutting that off. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and find the eye holes for the swordfish and that's one thing I do at the very end is put the eyes in but it kind of helps me imagine where the face needs to be. I'm going to take some light blue clay, this is about a 50-50 mix between the white and the blue and I'm going to smash it into a V shape and this is what's going to create the bottom lip of my fish and I'm going to again smooth that into the fish's face and I'm going to do a similar process to the top of the fish's mouth, but it's going to be a much thinner snake of clay that I apply. Now I want to make the two front fins that go on either side of the fish. So I'm just cutting some clay into triangles and then attaching them and smoothing them into the body. These are actually pretty fragile, so make sure you're careful. I already broke one of the fins off and had to reattach it, so just be mindful of that. I used my X-Acto to get a little bit of texture into the fin. And I have both fins attached, and so now I'm going to use a little bit of blue that I specifically mixed up for this project. I tried to get it as close to the lip color that I could, and I'm painting the stick. And I'm also putting a little bit of the blue in some various places like the ends of the fins to make everything match up. And I also painted the inside of the fish's mouth black, being careful not to get any of the paint on the pant leg. Now I need to make the mount for the fish, and I thought about doing this in wood, but I really wanted to try and make a wood grain using clay, because I'm trying to practice my clay skills. So what I decided to do was make a circle of clay and then run it through my clay machine, and that stretched it out to an oval, and that ended up being a pretty good size for my fish. And then I took some little balls of white clay and put it in for the fish's eyes and right before it went into the oven I decided to make some marks with my exacto to give the brown clay a wood look and then I did learn that you can paint clay before you put it in the oven so I decided to try that method out and put some paint on there. So now both these pieces are baked I know that looked kind of seamless, but I did bake them in between the paint and popping them off the tray. So now that both those pieces are baked, I'm going to use some Loctite Super Glue Gel Control. And I'm just going to put that on the back of the fish and work quickly because it will grab fairly quickly. Um, and then make sure that he's centered on the mount and just let him sit and make sure that the glue dries completely. And then before everything dries up, I just made sure to clean it up with a toothpick where needed. And now I'm using a dotting tool just to dot the little iris. And I'm using some black paint, uh, dry brushing it onto the wall mount and a little bit around where the fish's body meets the wall mount. Just to give it a little bit of dustiness and a little bit of an aged effect. 
So that's all I have for you today, guys. That's how I made Cousin Farouk and the Swordfish. I hope you really enjoyed this video. What I'm going to show you now are some photos of Cousin Farouk in different areas of the house. As always, I love to hear you guys' opinion. That's one of my favorite things about this channel. I'm putting a poll in the I card. It's that little circle with the I in the middle. Make sure to vote. I'd love to hear where you guys think he looks the best. I know there's no furniture in the mansion right now, but there will be in the future. But anyway, I really enjoyed this video. I hope you did too, and I hope you're enjoying Adam's Family October. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> That's why you're here.